So this is it. The first day of Chucklevision. Oh. Just imagine yeah. my own programmes, own scripts, own staff. Own staff? Yeah, you. Oh, I've never been staffed before. Oh, it's a very responsible job. Is it? Yes, and who knows? After this, the sky's the limit. Well, what's the first show about, then? Well, what do you think at this time of day? Um... Well, it's a breakfast time show, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, and guess what? What? I'm presenting it. Great. Can what? you cook, then? Why? The breakfast? No, you haven't got it at all, have you? No. Look, you run along while I get on with it. It's very early, it's Saturday, and it's breakfast time. Right, here we are. We there we are, then. I've done your eggs just as you like them, and I've done you some soldiers as well. What for? To dip in your egg. No, I mean, what's all the breakfast for? Well, it's breakfast time. Not that kind of breakfast. Take it away. Oh. <sighs> That's it. Hey, can't I do anything? No, I don't need any help. Well, what about the cameras and the lights and everything? Oh, it all works automatically. Automatically? Look, you see all these buttons here? Yeah. I just press a button and everything happens automatically. Great. What about the red one over there? Ah, never touch that red button. Whatever you do, don't touch that red button. Oh. Well, can't I do anything? Yes, I'll tell you what you can do. What? You can go and get me a nice comfy settee for my interviews. Right. Hmm. <laughs> and now for a special report from our roving reporter. Thanks, Frank. Well, as promised, here we are in the heart of Liverpool city centre. And I'll even go, though I'll it's go. and even though it's very, very early in the morning, you. as you can see, there's still You'll lots of crowds now. hustling and bustling all around me. going to say now. Oh. Here at last. I better tidy this up otherwise Paul will know there's something wrong. That's it. That's it, right by my chair. Right. That's it, have you got it? Oh. That's it, just a touch further. That'll do lovely, that'll do. What do you think? Well, let's have a look then. Just a minute. Hmm? What's this doing here? Do you know what this is? Looks like a piece of paper. Yeah, it's a piece of paper, but it's the schedule. Schedule? What does that do then? Well, this tells us what's in the programme, what's going on and what's going to happen and where. Oh. Look, here, Wayne Sleep's coming in later. Oh, well, I better call the vet then. What for? For the lame sheep. Not lame sheep, oh. Wayne Sleep. Oh, you mean... Yeah, that's him, that's him, yeah. And then there's Elton John. It's a shame about all these animals, isn't it? What are you talking about? Well, you said his elephant's gone. Not elephant's gone, Elton John. Oh, oh there's a the phone. Go and answer it. Can I answer it? Yeah, you answer it. Great. Hello? Oh, OK. Thank you. Who was it? Wayne Sleep. He's overslept. Oh, no. Yes. Well, let's take a look at the latest videos. 
They're very nice, aren't they? Very nice. Very nice, yeah. yeah. Now, let's go over to the weather room. The weather room. <laughs> now, first of all, let's take a look at the satellite picture taken at 3 o'clock this morning. As you can see, it was very dark at 3 o'clock this morning, so let's take a closer look at the overall weather picture. Very good. Good. Now, uh, first of all, you'll find this morning there's lots of cloud all over Scotland. That's not Scotland. Nate. That's Ireland. Scotland's up here. Don't worry about it. I'll rub it out. Oh, right, right. Yes, there'll be cloud over Scotland, but uh, the main details will be the rain. Lots of lashing rain all over the south of England. Be quite cold there too, and you'll probably find there's some hailstones, and they could be as large as this. I've been Abby? about that size. All right. Yes, I've been in amongst this hailstone, and it's not very nice. But don't worry, because by lunchtime this will clear completely, and it'll be quite nice this afternoon there. Now, the depression that's been hanging all over the country for weeks, and that fog. Doesn't it get into your bones? <sighs> don't like it at all. But don't worry too, because this afternoon that will clear completely, and the sun will come out, and it'll be really, really bright. Gorgeous day for going to the beach. Now, by midnight tonight, you'll find the overall weather picture will look something like this. Um, as you can see, by midnight tonight, it'll be dark again. But uh, don't forget, later on in the studio, Elton John will be joining us. But right now, it's over to Morning Story and Armchair Theatre. You've not pressed the button. Who oh, no. <laughs> Armchair theatre. Not the red one. Elm Street lies between Woodside School and the park. And that's where you'll find Sim Tolland, Ginger Jones and the Elm Street children. Or the Elm Street lot, as Woodside calls them. Now, the Elm Street lot don't go around looking for trouble, of course. But sometimes it finds them. And I certainly found them the day that Mr Crackenthorpe's bath was delivered. Not all the houses in Elm Street have a bath. Or the council would like them everywhere. Mr. Crackenthorpe hates the council. He said, I'll have my bathroom the way I want my bathroom to be. Thank you very much. And so he went out and bought a bathroom, goodness knows where, a second hand one as well. It was a half day at Woodside School when the bath was delivered, and all the Elm Street lot were there to see it. It was a particularly large bath because Mrs. Crackenthorpe was particularly large. Mr. Crackenthorpe said, I'll have Mrs. Crackenthorpe in that bath and out of that bath, even if I have to buy a hoist. Unfortunately, the Crackenthorpe's door was very narrow and the bath was certainly very wide. And it just wouldn't go in, despite the Elm Street lots cheering, the men's trying, and Mr. Crackenthorpe's jumping about and dancing and saying, I'll have the Lord on a lot of you if these goods aren't delivered. In the end, the lorry driver's mate got fed up and he dumped it in the garden. And there it lay for all to see. The Elm Street lock couldn't resist it. First of all, Johnny and Kitty Bates got into it. That was when, of course, the new Mr. Crackenthorpe was out shopping. They pretended it was a boat and they began to row it with all kinds of sticks and things. Then all the other children joined in and they became a whole crew of galley slaves rowing across the ocean. Then it began to rain. And they pretended that the boat was leaking and they had to get the bilge water out with yoghurt cartons. But just then Mr Crackenthorpe came back suddenly from the shops and the Elm Street lot ran for their lives. And then the bath disappeared. It was there in the morning when the Elm Street lot went to school. It was there in midday when they came back for the dinner. But sometime during the dinner hour, it vanished. Of course, Mr Crackenthorpe said, the Elm Street lot have stolen it. But every one of them knew that they hadn't. But when they came out of school that afternoon, old Mrs. Crackenthorpe came waddling towards them to ask them, no, to implore them, please return the bath. And she started crying. And it was those tears, because Mrs. Crackenthorpe was a nice old lady, really, and everybody felt sorry for her, that decided Sim Tolland. He drew the Elm Street lot around him, and he said, detect. The only trouble was, there was nothing for the detectives to go on. You see, every house in Elm Street had its kitchen at the back of the house. And that's where everybody was sitting having the dinner at the time the bath must have disappeared. The only exception was little Jimmy Clegg, who got out of his chair in Mrs Clegg's front room 
and ran to the window. When Sim questioned him and asked him had he seen anything, he got all scared and flustered. And all he could say was, clip-clop, 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 which was his impression of a horse. There was only one other clue to go on, a roundish, damp patch on the road outside the Crackenthorpe's house. Kitty Bates measured the patch with a tape. It was 18 inches across, and it seemed that there was nothing more that could be done about it. And then Ginger Jones decided to have a sniff. <laughs> oh, it's dung, he said. Horse dung. The Elm Street lot were baffled. What horse or horses? And who would have removed the droppings so neatly? And why? And then someone said, Miss Munson. Now, little Miss Munson was a bit balmy about her garden. And she was well known for going out and collecting all kinds of droppings and compost to use as fertilizer. Every time a rag and bone cart went past, Miss Munson would be out there with her little shovel to collect all the droppings. And then everyone realized where their detection had led them. For the rag and bone cart was also the scrap iron cart. Miss Munson admitted that she'd heard horses' hooves and that she'd seen horse droppings and the horse and cart and the Crackenthorpe's bath being driven down the road on it. But she just collected her horse droppings and said nothing. She didn't want to have any trouble. So, Jimmy Clegg was right. He'd seen what Miss Munson seen and he'd heard what Miss Munson heard. But he's only a little boy. That evening, Sim Tolland got his big brother Bert and the rest of the Elm Street lot and went down to the local scrapyard. Sim climbed on big brother Bert's shoulders and looked over the wall. And sure enough, there in the middle of the yard, looking as splendid as ever, was the bath. And sitting next to it on a broken down old couch was the rag and bone man. Oi! said Sim over the wall. Who's that? Get away! This is private property, said the rag and bone man. What did he say? asked Bert. Who's that with you? Who's that with you? said the rag and bone man. It's my big brother and all the Elm Street lot. And at that, the Elm Street lot all stamped their feet to show that they were really there. Nice bath, Sim continued. Our Mr. Crackenthorpe's lost a very valuable bath like that. He's down at the police station this minute. This isn't a valuable bath, said the rag and bone man. In fact, it, it's no good to us at all. It just takes up valuable space. In fact, I was thinking about taking and leaving it exactly back where I found it. What did he say? asked Bert. He said he's returning the bath, said Sim. And at that, the Elm Street lot all stamped their feet in triumph. Nobody ever knew for certain whether the rag and bone man had thought the bath was left out, whether he'd taken it because he thought there was no one looking. All we know is that very late, that very same night, it was left exactly where it was taken from. Mr. Crackenthorpe wasn't very happy about his bath disappearing and appearing like that in his own front garden. And so he was quite civil when Mr. Clegg, Mr. Badana and Bert Tolland appeared and they said, Hey, crackers, we'll take out your front window and we'll put your bath in that way. So that was that. But someone must have told Mr. Crackenthorpe something, because one day, when the coast was clear, she went down to see Sim Tolland and the Elm Street lot, and she gave them a great big bag of jelly babies. And as far as I know, Mr. Crackenthorpe never did buy a hoist to get Mrs. Crackenthorpe out of the bath. Maybe he couldn't get one that was strong enough. That's it, that's yeah. it. All the best breakfast shows have a nice, comfortable settee, you know. I know, I know. Yeah. Are you yeah. sure this coffee maker's working? Yes, oh, it's yeah, fine. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Good. Yeah, it's nice and comfortable, this settee, isn't it? Of course it is. Right, I'll just try it out. Oh, there's no need to do that because I tried it at the shop before I got Ah, it. yeah, you might have done, but I want to see what it's like for my guests, you see. Yeah, but. Oh, it's not comfortable at all. What? Oh, no wonder. I'm sitting on the schedule. What was that doing there? Right. I'll try it now. I don't... It's still not comfortable. <laughs> What's this newspaper doing here? That shouldn't be there either. I'll try it now. Hey, I thought you were going to sit in the armchair. Oh, no, no. I sit in the armchair while I'm doing my interviews, yeah. but my, my guests all sit easy, and I want to oh. see how comfortable it is. But don't you sure you don't... Just stand out in the way. I'm going to try it. Oh! 
Oh, traffic report. Go press a button. Oh, right. Don't touch the red one. Oh, oh, hello. This is me yesterday. Today's traffic report concerns something that is irritating to all motorists. Traffic cones. Yeah, Paul. Now, I've got one for you and one for me. Oh, thanks. I've given you the one with a bit of chocolate in. Well, that's very right. nice of you. Very yeah. nice of you. Now, we're here today <laughs> to investigate... We're here today to investigate the manufacture of these strange items of traffic furniture. Just a minute. What? what did you get me this for? Well, you said we were doing something about cones. Not this kind of cone. Traffic cones. Well, I thought it was a bit odd when you said line them up along the road. You haven't. I have. So it's back to the studio tomorrow for some up-to-the-minute traffic news. As you can see, traffic in town is held up, but help is at hand. And now, over to our foreign correspondent in Paris. I'm not in Paris. <laughs> and I'm not foreign. However, I do have a, a foreign paper here, so uh, I suppose while I'm here and we can get on with it, I'll do a little trick with a foreign paper. The old famed French torn and restored paper routine. If you can speak French, Remember a word of French from the paper. If you can't speak French, do as I do and just look at the pictures. Flick through the paper, showing you all the way through. And here we go with the tearing routine. Got to be a bit strong for this, the old. That's uh, four pieces. Let's see if my maths is as good as my French here. That's eight pieces, or eight and a half pieces. A little bit more tearing. Let's just really get into this. <laughs> Retrieves bits from floor, because otherwise it wouldn't all go back together properly. As we say, this is the famed torn and restored French paper trick. And there we are, chaps. Back in the studio, you can see that that paper is now fully restored. If you don't believe me, well, have a look for yourselves. One French paper fully put back together. Well, I think, meanwhile, it's time for me to get on with my reading and uh, back to the studio. What's next? Elton John coming in to go through the papers. No, he's not. What do you mean he's not? He rang earlier and he's had his papers delivered to his house this morning, so he doesn't need to borrow hours now, you see. Oh, dear. Oh, oh well, uh, we're joined right at this minute on the sofa by Wayne Slee. <laughs> Look, hey, this is the plan, is it? right? Now, this is the questions for Elton John, right? Mm -hmm. Over here, I've got the answers, all in order. You read them out. And don't forget these. Just go and sit behind the settee. Nobody will know the difference. Will it work? Of course it'll work. He knows. <laughs> you won't touch these, Wayne, will you? Good. Welcome back. Our special guest today is Elton John. Perhaps most well-known for numbers like Goodbye, Yellow Candle in the Wind and Don't Go Breaking My Brick. Good morning, Elton. 1971. Yes. Uh, well, tell me, what first attracted you to the world of pop music? Being chairman of Watford Football Club. Hey? Um, oh, uh, oh, I see. Well, um, when did you first see Watford play? At a concert in Moscow with a piano and a five-piece band. Um, well, out of all your recordings, uh, what was your favourite number? Number nine, a great centre-forward. Psst! Hey! You've got all the answers the wrong way around. I know, but if I turn them round, I can't read the writing. Oh. Uh, well, in that case, um, I'm sorry, that's all we've got time for this morning, and it's back to the desk. Oh, that's me. Hey. Well, that's it for another week. Another week. We... <laughs> um, we hope you enjoyed our special guests, Elton John and Wayne Sleep. It's a pity the sheep couldn't come, though, isn't it? It is, really, but it went mm. well, didn't it? It went well. I thought it went well, yeah. Okay. Well, a last quick look at the clock. Still there. Yes. Until next week, then, goodbye. Goodbye. Why don't you try this one? No, don't touch the red button.